So I've been meaning to talk about writing for orchestral VST kind of instruments on the channel for a minute now, mostly for two reasons. Number one is I have an orchestral background. I went to music school, I studied overseas, I've spent a lot of time as a classical bass player actually in an orchestra and working from the inside in a big way. And the other thing is I just finished a piece called Camellarella that I worked on with my friend Fulmer. And um, I mean, here it is. It's it's pretty much all done with VSTs. It's over, it's probably 40 minutes long. Um, and I learned a lot from putting this thing together. I'd never done this long of an orchestral piece in the computer. But anyway, this is a big topic. This is probably going to have to be in a couple parts because there's just so many things to cover. I hope I get questions. Please leave them in the description. I would love to help you out if you're trying to go down this road. Um, and beyond that, roll the credits. Let's do this. So the two biggest things that I wish I knew going into this before I started with any of this orchestral composition inside the computer is this. Number one, you really can't do that much if your libraries are not good. That's just something you can't really get around. You have to have a good orchestral library. There's a lot that are still popular, but they're kind of dated at this point. So I would maybe use them if I like if somebody wanted like a reality TV kind of vibe and they wanted that kind of corny sort of fake sounding thing. Um, but if you want realistic sounds, um, I would recommend just saving your money and going for one of the better libraries. Um, the one that I use or that I did all of this with, if you listen to the, the piece Camellarella, you want to hear the whole thing from top to bottom. It's basically all this guy. This is the Spitfire Audio BBC Core Library. So they have three. There's um, the Discover, which you can actually get, I think it's $50, or it's free if you take a survey. That's actually where I started. Um, and then there's a, a more expensive one, and then this is the middle tier. I think I got this for around 450 bucks or 400 bucks. It was something in that price range. Um, but uh, it's it's really worth it. The other one that um, I think comes with Ableton, that's fairly cheap. It might be around a hundred per module. Is uh, the Project Sam libraries that you can get through Ableton, and they also have paid ones. I don't use those as much, but they to my ears, as somebody who's spent some time in orchestras, it sounds pretty good. Um, that being said, I have been using this one, and one of the reasons why I like it so much is in addition to getting kind of the core, you know, no pun intended, uh, orchestral instruments. Um, so you get like a full string section, you get horns, brass, woodwinds, and, and some percussion. I wish they had a little bit more here. Um, and I also wish that there were certain things included. Like I think if you buy the more expensive one, you get contrabassoon and, you know, different kinds of, of brass instruments, things that are a little bit more esoteric, but this is definitely plenty to work with. Um, and then the other thing I really like is there's a cool variety of articulations and techniques inside, like flautando to a string player. I would think that that's a more esoteric kind of technique. I was kind of surprised that, like something like Bartok Pitts, which is when you pull on the string of the the instrument and it smacks into the fingerboard stuff like that i was expecting it to have but i did not expect it to have um like some of these muted techniques cs means concertino it's a muted string technique or sol ponticello you know tremolo sol ponticello these kinds of techniques uh, i was pleasantly surprised and i used them all over the place all right, so assuming you have a good orchestral library, like I said, I like Spitfire, Project Sam, uh, a couple other ones. Some of the native instrument stuff is pretty good. Um, those are probably the ones I would start looking at first. Um, assuming you have that, the next thing, and this is what I think is kind of the big secret to all of it, is you're going to have to get really comfortable automating a lot of things, a lot of parameters. And the reason why is this. If you're in an actual orchestra, there's a lot of motion just inherent to the whole thing. You think about it like if there's a string player and they're playing on different parts of the bow, the sound is going to change depending on 
if you're at, at the frog of the bow near where you hold it, or if you're at the tip or somewhere in between. So there's just that back and forth motion. Then as a player, you're going to move a little bit when you play. You don't just stand there like a robot and, and just hammer it out. So especially if you see some orchestras play, like if you go watch the video with the Berlin Philharmonic or something, like they move around. They're not just, you know, so you have the bow moving, you have the players moving, then you have a bunch of people all doing different things a little bit. And then the next thing is when you play, there's kind of a natural variance and, and a phrasing that you impart to stuff. Like as a player, if I see dotted eighth notes, let's say just going gun, 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 like spiccato or staccato eighth notes, just written out for a couple measures. I'm not going to play those super mechanically and robotically, or, or even if I do try to do that, like a down bow, if you pull the bow this way, that's not going to sound ever the same as an up bow when the bow is going the other direction. There's just a natural variation that happens. And more often than not, you're going to phrase things. A lot of orchestral music is about moving to something or moving away from it. So there's kind of this implied motion. And so to, to get back to what I was saying, though that string of staccato eighth notes that look the same on the, the page, I'm going to play those slightly different lengths. Whereas if you just go in the, into the DAW and you program in eighth notes, they're going to sound pretty mechanical, even if you are using round robin sampling. So you're going to have to automate some things to try to impart some of that flavor that comes naturally from a real player. So now let's have some concrete examples of what that automation looks like. So I am just going to solo my string section right here. Oop. Let me do this. Okay. all this stuff that's moving around let's drill down into what this is all right let's take just say like the violin one part so this expression there's an expression knob which is kind of just like a level control um, and then there's dynamics control right so what this is i suspect is doing under the hood is swapping out different sets of samples so as you move lower it's sets of samples that were quieter and then as you raise this up, it's going to shift to a louder set of samples. That's what I think it's doing under the hood. I would love to know exactly what the engineers at Spitfire did. Um, but let me just get this one alone again. Um, I think this is, there's a lot of instances. I just want to make sure it's the right one. So you see what's happening here just with the the natural accent pattern what's happening is i'm pumping into some of these controls here um so i think that yeah this is the expression one oh the other thing you have to watch out is you can automate this at the track level or at the clip level um this is more of an ableton only thing but i guess this would would uh, transfer to anything. Yeah, so this is the automation I was looking for. I th it looks like I just played this in on the mod wheel. You see that corresponds, right? So there's a couple layers of automation happening here. There's this one that's kind of accenting the front of everything, which is how I would play it. I would go I would have kind of that pumping nature to make it drive. Um, instead of just kind of playing it static, like da 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 like there's no phrasing in that. And then you can also see, this is the motion part I was talking about. In addition to this pump, pumping kind of pattern that looks kind of like like a saw wave or something, you see how it kind of trends upward. So it's moving to something. It's moving to the next big arrival point in a subtle way. It's not just I didn't just sit there and kind of program in a saw wave and call it a day there's a motion to this that's leading you somewhere so that's one of the big secrets i would say to, to getting this to sound like the real thing is you have to just know what a, a player would actually do so and then on top of that we have some expression modulation happening 
which is basically, like I said, just the volume control of the plugin. Um, but then there's also another interesting automation that's happening. Um, he, this plugin allows for key switching. So meaning, um, I hope I don't break anything if I do this. Well, let's see, I just won't save. Um, yeah, so you see these green keys? The white, the lighter colored ones are the actual notes that the instrument plays, right? But the green keys allow you to switch between techniques. So if I play this passage, watch what's happening. See how it switches real quick for a couple notes? So it's spiccato. And then whenever one of these low notes pops in, this is um, below the range of what the instrument actually can do. That's what these are, right? So th these parts up here, these notes, are what you're actually hearing. Watch what happens when you hit this. Bloop. This is a key switch, right? So what it's switching the technique to is this long marcato attack uh, technique. And then the next key switch brings it back to spiccato. You hear how it, hear it naturally gets a little bit, lo or naturally sounding, it, it gets a little longer just on this part. So that's another thing you want to mix up is just even if you're intending to write a whole line of just like steady eighth notes, like if I were to write this out on paper, I would probably write it as eighth or sixteenth notes with a couple of accents on top of it and then call it a day. It's very simple to write and a player would know how to interpret that. But I'm not working with a player here. I'm working with a computer. So you have to tell it exactly what you want it to do. So what I would recommend is stack a couple things up. The other thing um, that's worth mentioning here is we're stacking a couple techniques. This is something that, I mean, you see it happen in orchestra, orchestra land a lot, but you would normally have to split up a section. Like if you wanted cellos with cello spiccato consordino, that's what CS is, you would need to have half the section doing one and then playing normal, and then the other half of the section doing this technique. Whereas in this kind of digital computer world, you don't have that limitation. You could just say, hey, we're gonna have two cello sections. Oops. You could say, hey, we're gonna have two cello sections. We're gonna have one that plays a normal part and then one with mutes and we're gonna layer them for color. And we don't have to worry about hiring a second cello section to do that. We just make another instance of the plugin. So um, that's another thing you, you can do to just to, add, to fill things in. Like if I solo this cello part here, Oh, that's not soloed. Okay. Let's try that again. It's just doubling it, but this has a darker color to it. And I think the composite of it is quite nice. Plus also, it just adds some of that variety of sound. We have different automations. Oh, this one's not automated at all. Oh, okay. So we have this, I guess I put this in just to darken it up, um, because this is automated. Unless, hmm, I wonder, maybe I got, got away with nothing here? That would be interesting. Let's see what I actually did. Maybe I did. Oh, no, I did some automation. This is at the, at the clip level. Um, that's one Ableton thing you just have to be mindful of. But anyway, th this is getting kind of drawn out and I could talk all night about this easily. So um, I would love it if you had some questions or further just like sticking points you have if you're out there and you're trying to to write in this way to do orchestral music in, in a digital audio workstation like Logic or Ableton. Um, leave questions below if you like what I'm doing. There's, you know, the subscribe button, you know how to work that. I also do a Patreon. Once a week I do a paid video just for subscribers because it supports the channel and I can go a little bit more in depth there. So um, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.